Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at working in a junk journal and exploring some white space, or my version of exploring white space anyway. So white space is my demon. I really, really struggle with it, as you can probably see from all my art videos that I've got up in my Instagram feed. If I've got a page, I like to fill it with colour or a shape or a collage or something. I really, really struggle with white space, yet it's something I absolutely adore when I look at other people's artwork. So I was looking at a piece, again, inspired by um, Inky Quill. She had this beautiful art print, which had a beautiful balance of white space on it. And I thought, I'm just going to have a go and see if I can do something like that. So it had collage in it, it had a bit of paint in it, so it was all the things that I enjoyed doing, but it had the white space that I wanted to have a play with too. So I'm starting off with my junk journal, and I'm just collaging down some black and white collage piece, pieces. So I started off with some grid paper in the background. These are the Tim Holtz um, tissue papers. I've got a range of different things in it, the music and the architectural uh, prints, the text, butterflies, all the different bits and pieces I really liked. So from one little piece of tissue paper you can get lots of different collage elements from it. Then I raided my washi tape um, hoard. I never used to be a washi tape person and then in the last year I found it's actually quite useful and now I've got way more than I really need. In the last week or so I've actually picked up a whole heap of black and white ones. I've been doing a little bit more with black and white. I like the, the graphic nature of it, so um, it worked in really well with this page. So I just got all the black and white tapes that I had and just started to play with them. So it was a good way to break in some of those new roles that I've got. So there's some Heidi Swap ones, um, the old, very old, I think it's the first version of the Dina Wakely ones. Um, I think there might be some Dilutions ones in there. And just sort of putting down a few pieces, tearing them up, making different patterns of them, putting some over the top of other ones, just playing around and being a bit silly. Working out where to put them was a bit difficult because again I was trying to keep white space and as you can see already I've pretty much used up all my white space area so you can you can see it's a real struggle for me to, to stop on what I'm doing. So the next thing I'm doing is covering over the top with a layer of clear gesso. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to put some watercolour on my page. Now I wasn't sure how this is going to work to be perfectly honest. Um, obviously I've put uh, color, uh, watercolour over some collage papers before but I've usually not done it on top of the Tim Holtz papers or washi tape. The reason for that is both of those have a more plasticky coating to them, so they, they kind of resist watercolour. So I thought by putting the clear gesso over the top, that might help it adhere to the, the page a little bit more. You could use matte gel medium, because that's got a bit of tooth in it. I use the Dina Wakely uh, clear gesso, which in actual fact is actually quite glossy. Um, some of the other um, brands of gel medium are uh, gloss clear gesso, sorry, that I have, have a lot more tooth to them. They're actually a little bit rough. They feel like sandpaper when you put them down. So be aware, not all clear gessos are the same and they may work a little bit differently. Uh, because, you know, I didn't have enough white space already, I decided to fill in any gaps I had with stamp, <coughs> excuse me, stamping. So these are some stamps from Seth Apter, I think from IO, and they're just random bits of text um, to put into the background as well. So at this stage, I, was, I liked what it was. I actually really liked the black and white nature of it, but I'd kind of defeated my purpose in, in the white space. Now, the only saving grace I had at this stage was the fact that um, for the inspiration from Adele's page was that she'd painted some white hearts over the back, so she'd gone back in with gesso over the top of it and repainted in some white space. So I figured it's okay you've got a busy background because you're going to put some more white over the top. So that was that was what I was sort of pinning my hopes on. 
Now because I knew I was going to put some watercolours over the top and some white paint over the top, I wanted to make sure that my base layer was really, really dry, particularly the black ink, to make sure it didn't smear anywhere. So I'm using the Jane Davenport Brights palette, it's one of my favourite palettes. Um, the colours are just really saturated. And I'm just mixing them down sort of in a rainbowy colour on the way, all the way down the page. Not going completely to the edges, again trying to leave that white at the edge. And just moving down the page with the different colours. You can see kind of where it's resisting in some places, which I don't mind. It gives you some of that natural pooling that watercolours do. So it kind of works well. It would have been interesting to do a page without putting the clear gesso on to see if it would work the same. That's another experiment for another day. I'm glad I put the clear gesso over the top, but to be honest, I'm not sure if it made much of a difference. You can actually see when the watercolour dries, it gets a sort of matte finish to it, which um, is an interesting look, particularly that I'm going to put stuff over the top. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on, on if that was necessary or not, but it's how we went with it. So I'm just using a food ball pen to draw over the top, just to draw out some rough sketchy heights. And in a variety of different sizes, sort of filling up that area with the colour in it. Now, you could draw out the hearts first and watercolour around it. I just chose to put the watercolour down first and paint over the top knowing the fact that by putting the paint over the top it's going to reactivate so I'm going to tint the gesso that I'm going to put down. If you really want to have pure white I would suggest maybe painting around with your watercolour um, after you've done the white but it's, it's up to you how you choose to do it. So now I'm just going in with my gesso and covering over. I'm trying to put on a thinnish layer so you can kind of still see the collage underneath but thick enough that it's more white than the tinted colour. You can certainly see on the height that I'm doing at the moment that blue coming through but it's white enough that you can see it pop off the page. So I'm just going in and colouring them all up and I'm really quite liking how it's going as I'm, I'm going along. One of the struggles I have, I suppose, when I was doing this, I love being inspired by people, um, and a lot of my artwork is inspired by other people. Always credit someone when you're inspired by them, though. That's really important. Let them know what you're doing. That it's not your ideas. So, huge shout out to Adele here with her her artwork. This is where it was inspired from. But one of the things I struggle with is I don't want to copy it exactly. I want to Put my own spin on it in some way shape or form and you know, particularly with collage pieces it's never ever going to be exactly the same because obviously you're going to be using different collage pieces you're never going to have exactly the same stuff but as I was looking at it, I'm going oh is it too similar is it you know is it a complete direct copy and it probably is I'm sure I could put her piece next to it and you go yeah I can see exactly where you got this from but I wanted to add some stuff to it the other thing that was getting me as I was doing this was I really liked those white hearts and it certainly put the white space back in my page again but I was just thinking oh there's too much white I can't cope with it so I decided that I would get some stamps out and stamp into it again completely defeating the purpose of what I was trying to do with this page which was to keep the white space so if anyone has got any tips out there in YouTube land or Instagram land and how to keep white space and not overcomplicate things, I would love to know what you do because as you can see, it's a real struggle for me. I ended up getting some of the Dina Wakely stamps, her really sketchy contour stamps. And I'm really glad I chose these stamps instead of the ones behind because they are still line sketches. So while I have stamped into these hearts they are still liney enough that you're getting a lot of that white space from behind. I'm just using some extra of the tissue paper to use as a bit of a mask so I'm not stamping all over it and when I'd finished doing this I thought no I want to put some stuff in some of the other hearts so you can see one of the things about these um, images which I really love, it's one of the reasons why I picked them up, 
was it had the words through the hair of the um, contour sketches and in the kit for the stamps it's got some of those little um, words in Dina's beautiful handwriting so I thought on the sketchy hearts I could kind of do the same thing and add those words in so they look like they're part of the hearts and I've I've written them in so I'm just using a little bit of washi tape because the phrase is a little bit long because this stamp actually says be strong I just used some washi tape to mask off the B so I could just have the word strong with this stamp I could not for the life of me work out what it actually said because it's so scribbly um, it actually says um, be true to you so I masked off the um, to you and just had be true put into the hearts I loved how those little bits of script into the hearts worked this is the bit I wish I hadn't done which is then go over with the stamps that I put in the background and filled in some of that white space but overall I was so pleased with how this came together and I'm so glad that um, Adele out there shares her beautiful inspiration with us to inspire other people and working with white space is something that I'm going to continue to try and work with and try and work out because I love the look of it it's just something that I struggle with at the moment so have a go yourself please send me any tips and tricks you have for white space and thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time Bye.